My wife asked me, you know that big cheese board you made me? I'm like, yeah. Why'd you ask? So, long story short, and I'm not really sure how this has happened, but I'm making a laser engraved cheese board for my wife's friend's sister's friend. Now, if I'm being forced, pardon me, if I'm volunteering to do this, I thought I could also use it as an opportunity to make a brief video on how I added laser engraving capabilities to my CNC machine. That is, the machine you're watching right now. My machine is a true hobbyist setup. It's a work bee kit driven by an Arduino running GRBL. But what I'll show you will work for other CNCs too. That's given you have an output to drive the laser. My Arduino features this GRBL shield. There are different versions of these shields and of GRBL and the functions of the pins may vary. My configuration uses one of the Z limit pins to drive the laser. I can only guess this is because the IO pins are in short supply and they figure whilst driving a laser, you're not gonna need your Z axis limits. Anywho, this pin outputs the signal that drives the laser. The signal is 3.3 volts when the G code wants the laser on and zero volts when it wants it off. Unfortunately, 3.3 volts won't directly power a 12 volt laser. That porridge is too cold. My Arduino has a 24 volt supply, but that porridge is too hot. So I use a DC to DC converter and Goldilocks, we have some perfect 12 volt porridge. I feed the 12 volts and the 3.3 volt signal wire into a MOSFET driver module. MOSFETs are commonly used to drive high powered loads like a motor with a low voltage signal. You can think of it as a very fast gate. The gate opens and allows the 12 volts to pass through to the laser when the input signal is 3.3 volts and closes when the input signal is zero volts. Or in other words, we have a laser driver. In regards to the cooling fan sitting on top of the laser head, I tap straight into my 12 volt supply to power this. I also included a switch in this circuit and I manually turn the fan on when I'm engraving. The laser, DC to DC converter and the MOSFET modules are all generic and can be found on eBay or Amazon. You can probably find them a little cheaper than the listings I'm showing here, but you're looking at a little more than $60 for materials, and that's a cheap laser engraver. To operate my laser engraver, I use Laser GRBL. I'd recommend this software to any CNC hobbyist searching for a simple and free laser engraving software. It's a must to add the custom button back to this software. I find it a little baffling that these features aren't included in the default installation, but they aren't hard to add. It's a quick download from the Laser GRBL website and a right click in the button area to install. Using Laser GRBL is as easy as opening the image you want to engrave, configuring the settings, Work out what settings to use, I required some trial and error. I've settled on these settings as an okay starting point for most engravings that I do. But I still occasionally tweak the settings depending on the job. You can see now the G-code has been created. You can set your origin and run the machine straight from here, or save the G-code file for later use as I'm doing here. Now if you were drawing a circle, you'd probably draw it like this. In other words, you put pen to paper, move it over the part of the page you want marked, and the pen is drawing the entire time without leaving the page and no movement is wasted. You wouldn't draw it like this, going across the page row by row, putting your pen to the page only when you want it mark and lifting it the rest of the time. It would mean the pen has ultimately traveled the entire circle including the blank center space and that requires a lot more movements. The reason I'm telling you this is because this is how laser GRBL does it. So when there's a lot of blank space between sections being engraved, the result is a lot of wasted movements. The wasted movements are shown by laser GRBL as a shaded light gray area. It's a pretty minimal amount for this job, but for some jobs it can add up and cause the job to take much longer. Making the job run vertically or diagonally will sometimes reduce this wasted movement. And in some instances where I've had to repeat the same job multiple times, I've taken the effort to separate the image to be engraved into multiple sections created the G-code for each section independently, and then married the G-codes together with a text editor. By doing this, I've been able to drastically reduce the wasted movements. Now back to that cheese board. I've got some oak bench top from Hammer Barn, cut it to size, rounded over the edges, rounded out some handles, sanded it smooth, clamped it to my CNC, and then it's time for my laser driver to shine. I finished the board with a few coats of oil, and there you are, a pretty decent laser engraved cheese board. I've engraved some other stuff too. Good on you guys for watching. I hope you have found this video useful. It's a brief overview, but hopefully enough to get you started. If you build your own CNC laser add-on, let me know how you go in the comments.